Okay, the first specific reflex we're going to talk about is the stretch reflex. This is a somatic reflex. It is monosynaptic, meaning that it will only require a sensory neuron and a motor neuron without an interneuron. This particular image is showing an example, a diagram, of the stretch reflex. The first component here is the stretch receptor. This is called muscle spindle. It is a sensory receptor that detects stretching in the particular muscle. When the muscle is stretched, for example, when a reflex hammer, like you see here, taps the patellar ligament, it creates a stretching in the muscle that will stimulate the receptor, which will then create a nerve impulse along the sensory neuron. Now it does this in the typical way. Mechanically gated ion channels will open in response to the stretch depolarizing the membrane, creating a greater potential. And if, the, if the stretch is strong enough and enough ion channels open, the greater potential will reach threshold and voltage-gated ion channel will open, resulting in an action potential or a nerve impulse along the sensory neuron, as you see here. The sensory neuron will travel back up the femoral nerve, in this case, or whichever nerve innervates the muscle in question, and is going to travel back to the spinal nerve, into the dorsal root ganglion, into the dorsal root of the spinal nerve, into the spinal cord via the dorsal horn of gray matter, which you see here. And then we'll travel along this path right here, where its synapse is immediately the motor neuron. That motor neuron will take an impulse and continue the impulse through the ventral horn of gray matter, which you see here. Out the ventral root, out the mixed spinal nerve, and back along that motor neuron to the same muscle. And we'll stimulate it to contract, which will counteract the stretching to protect the muscle from an overstretch. This reflex is monosynaptic, meaning that there's only one synapse to have the reflex control. It is ipsilateral, meaning that the motor impulse leaves on the same side of the spinal cord. And it is not intersegmental, meaning that the motor neuron is also on the same segment of the spinal cord as the sensory neuron. Now, the dotted line you see here and the extra branch you see here is what's called the reciprocal innervation. While this reflex is going on, another impulse is branching off from the sensory neuron that is going to stimulate an interneuron in the integrating center. This is the integrating center of the reflex arc. This is the integrating center of the reciprocal innervation. This interneuron is inhibitory, which means that it will synapse with a motor neuron inhibiting it from firing a nerve impulse. That's why it's a dashed line. There is no impulse traveling along this motor neuron. This motor neuron innervates the hamstring muscles, which are the antagonist of the quadriceps. If this motor neuron is inhibited, it will prevent the hamstring muscles from contracting. What that does, that makes it easier for the quadricep muscles to contract because the opposing muscle is forced to relax. Each reflex has a reciprocal innervation. The reciprocal innervation will typically do the opposite of the reflex in the antagonistic muscles, making it easier for the reflex to take place. That's the reciprocal innervation. Now this stretch reflex, keep in mind, this example is the quadriceps, but, th but keep in mind this is going to happen in most skeletal muscles. So I can use this example for the biceps brachii, where the, where the reciprocal innervation would be the triceps brachii, or I could do it in the triceps brachii, where the reciprocal innervation would be the biceps brachii. So all of these muscles, these skeletal muscles, are going to have this stretch reflex to make sure that it is protected from overstretching.